Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today we have episode 29 for you all. And I'm going to be honest with you, we're coming off the gridiron today. NFL week one just passed. It was a great, phenomenal week of football. Thursday night, all the way through Monday night, all the drama, all the plays, fantasy, everything you could have asked for out of an NFL kickoff weekend. This week one brought it. Um, And so we're here to touch on all of that. Aaron Rodgers is out for this season with a torn Achilles four snaps into his New York Jets career. The Cowboys, my Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Best defense since the steel curtain. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Oh, wow. We're starting early. (laughs) Tua, reporter asked him today if he cares about not people think he doesn't have a, a strong arm. He said he threw for 466. What I need a strong arm for. Mm, Tyreek went good. for Tyreek on pace for like 3,000 yards. He said he was going <laughs> to get 2K. He trying to go for 3K. And lastly, you know we got to touch on the basketball still at the end of the show. We are going to have to talk about Team USA leaving the World Cup without a medal. Couldn't even get third place. Not on Dylan Brooks' got, watch. And got 40 balls by Dylan Brooks. We're going to get into that at the end because that's way too crazy. But going to get the housekeeping out of the way as always. If you are on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you're on audio platforms, be sure to uh, pre-download the show. Leave us a five-star rating. And then go ahead and follow the socials there on the screen at the bottom. At Off The Glass Pod on Instagram. And at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. But we're going to go ahead and get right into it with the Monday night football game. Aaron Rodgers, four plays into his tenure as a New York Jets quarterback, is out for the season with a torn Achilles. It was very, very suspect from the get-go because he stood up and then he laid down and then he needed help off the field and they were reporting that it was an ankle, but then... He went in the blue 10, had to get on the card, and then he got the boot on. And now you got the clip going around on Twitter. And I'm not a doctor. Even the people that are on Twitter at the end of the day, like we're all watching the same thing. So like none of us can be certain. But we all saw what KD's calf looked like in that Raptors game in 2019 in the finals, where you watched his calf look like a guitar string, like you just watched it vibrate through the whole Mm -hmm. thing. They zooming in on it. You can see Aaron Rodgers' calf do the same thing. Seemed like a torn Achilles at that moment. And as the game went on and on, no real news came out. And then it was like, well, he's out for the rest of the game. Press conference afterwards, Robert Sala said that he thinks it's the Achilles. MRI on Tuesday morning confirmed it. And so he is out for the entirety of the season after four plays. And what felt like legitimately could have been the best Jets team in maybe My like lifetime. 60 years, bro, yeah. since like Broadway Joe Namath. Like the first time I think a lot of those fans had real optimism about being legit Super Bowl contenders with, I think, pretty much the best quarterback they've had since Joe Namath. In four plays is just like, poof, gone back to square one with Zach Wilson, who still has the lowest career QBR for any quarterback that has, I think, started 15 or 20 games in NFL history. Man, this is like, I'm not a Jets fan. I'm far from a Jets fan. I have no dog in that fight at all. Like, I'm not a Jets fan. I'm not an Aaron Rodgers guy. Like, I'm just a, a, a NFL fan. That joke made me sad to watch, bro. Like, that legitimately, like, but put it this way, yo, Jets fans in general have gone through years of just bad quarterback play, bad draft pick, bad, just bust, 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 bad quarterback play. They get a, a that, that defense look legit. Like, we're going to, I'm probably pretty sure we're going to talk about NFL defenses in general because it's like five NFL defenses that mm-hmm. look disgusting this weekend. But that's one of them. That way, and we knew coming in that defense is legit, top to bottom, no weaknesses across the board. Brees Hall, 
ACL doesn't even look like fully healed, and he still looks like one of the top five running backs in the league. He bouncing everything to the outside. Like, bro, he's legit, and he's not even 100%. You still got Dalvin Cook backing him up, who will step down from what he is, but still, like, as your backup, is crazy. Um, Garrett Wilson. You know the agendas we was trying to push on this show. Garrett Wilson, man. That's what's really eating me up. Like, even with Zach, to see him – Mm. Oh, that was so clean, bro. For those of y'all, so if, if y'all didn't see the game, go right now. Pause pause this. If you're on YouTube, pause this and just type in Garrett Wilson touchdown versus Bills. This man, Zach Wilson, threw one of the – I can't even say it's a back shoulder. He said on the sideline he was trying to throw the back shoulder. I can't He tell. literally threw it at Tredavious White's face. Yeah. This man, Garrett Wilson, said – Never mind. Let me let me play DB right quick. Brought it back to him, and as he's on the ground, tipped it to himself and caught it. I haven't heard a commentator get that excited for a catch in a long time, bro. Not to say that it may be on the same tier as the OBJ catch, but just like, man, Garrett Wilson is a special player, and I still think even with Zach Wilson, or if they do go out, and we'll get into this in a little bit, like and get a free agent quarterback to come in and you know, be their guy for this year. He's still going to have a very good season. Just what we (laughs) were predicting to potentially be like this crazy 16, 1700 yard season with Aaron Rodgers. To see, like, to see that go out the window at the same time as the injury, like, it's just, as a Jets fan, I can't imagine it. But like like you said, just as a general NFL fan, like this team was going to be so, fun to watch like you already said the defense was cream of the crop one of the best defenses in the nfl and you were going to bring in one of the best quarterbacks of all time to play with one of the most exciting superstar young receivers and it just we didn't even get to see an attempt that way like that hurts man that hurts it was when they saw after the game and he was like Aaron Rodgers told me, sorry, kid. I was like, man, if I was a Jets fan, that would have made me cry, man. That would have been like, that would have broke my heart to see. But, man, just like like you said, the defense, Gary Wilson, Brees Hall, Dalvin. I understand the O-line's bad, but it's just like, bro. And I guess this is a, somewhat of, a, well, of an overreaction because I'm going to sprinkle in some overreactions as we go through some of these games, mm-hmm. man. This team was legit. Like, with Aaron Rodgers, bro. This team easy like the people that were like Jets haters. I was saying like, oh, it's not gonna work. They're not even gonna make the playoffs in the AFC. You're stupid. I I don't care if it's only I don't care if it's only one game. You're stupid. Right. That's just crazy. Like we, th- we saw what that defense did last year with a full year of Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson, Chris Trevler, Mike White. Bro, the the way I see it is. If Aaron Rodgers came in and he wasn't MVP Rodgers, he didn't have to be MVP Rodgers. He could have been the quote-unquote trash Aaron Rodgers that he was the year before. And they would have still made the playoffs and still had a chance to at least go to the AFC Championship. This team is so good. Like, they just need, and I guess we're going to talk about it, they just need someone to come in and not mess it up. Like, there's one of those teams where you have a great defense, the running game, like once Brees Hall gets 100% healthy, that running game is one of the best running games in the league. Mm-hmm. You still have Garrett Wilson on the outside. So, like, you got to have a, a guy who can just manage the game and give the ball to Garrett Wilson when you need to pass the ball. Like, you just need a quarterback to come in and not mess it up. So, it's like, I like I understand that Robert Hall says Zach Wilson's their guy. They can't ride the season with Zach Wilson. I'm sorry. They can't do it. They cannot. Bro, this team is too good. They, like, We've seen teams make it somewhat far in the playoffs with so-so to borderline bad quarterback play. Mm -hmm. Those situations, excuse me, you had a top-ranked defense and a top-running game. They will have the top-ranked defense, and once Brees Hall gets 100% healthy, right now, even at at his health he is right now, they can have a top-running game. They can win games if they just have a guy in there that's not going to make mistakes. They can't ride with Zach Wilson because he's not that game manager guy. He's not just going to go in and not lose you the game. He will actively lose you the game. <laughs> like, you just need, like, a Jacoby Brissett. Bro, you could have an Andy Dalton. 
a Joe Flacco. Like, you just need somebody to come in and just not mess it up. And this defense and the run game alone will carry you to the playoffs. So I I don't know that I don't know what their options are gonna be. I don't know who they're actively targeting right now, but it cannot be Zach Wilson. I'm sorry. And for an NFL fan, I do not want to watch Zach Wilson for the rest of this season. I don't. I don't want to watch him waste the talent that's on this team right now. I have a list now pulled up of the this list is right now just the free agent quarterbacks who are on the table for the Jets. I've spent like most of the day thinking about this, if I was the Jets, what would I do? So I'm just going to list off some of these free agents. You got Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick, Josh Rosen, Joe Flacco, Matt Ryan, who I think is on CBS as an analyst now, but he said he's officially not retired yet. So that could be an option. Chase Daniels, Nick Foles. And then, I mean, we're getting a little bleak here. Kellen Mond, Trevor Simeon. Danny Atling, Ian Book, Matt Barkley, Brett Hundley. You lost me. Colt McCoy. Um, Colt McCoy. Look, like to your point, right, there's guys on this list who will come in and not lose you a game. They ain't going to win you a game. They're going to be very good at just not losing you a game. In terms of trade targets, you look at guys – Jameis, his name has gotten thrown in the ring. He is a guy that'll lose you a game. But he's a he guy will. that'll hey, he'll win you some games too. He's a risk I mean, taker. J Bo gunslinger. J- he gonna th- listen, he come in there. That Garrett Wilson agenda is still getting pushed. <laughs> he's still he, gonna get that. He at 17. least gonna throw it. He at least gonna throw it. He gonna get that 17 on it. Um, but I've sat and I've thought about it, and I really think you gotta let it be Zach. Really? Solely because I think what we saw from him last night or Monday night in the second half, he came out a little bit more composed. He got the drives when he needed to. He had a couple of really clutch third down completions when you had to have them. Um, Again, the Garrett Wilson touchdown pass is not a great thrown ball by any means, but like at the end of the day, points are points. He knows the system. He's been there for was this is year three for him now, right? Um, yeah. And it doesn't sound like Aaron Rodgers is retiring. He just posted on Instagram a few hours ago saying, you know, the the night is darkest before the dawn. Like mm-hmm. something, some dark Batman quote or something like that. No, I'm saying he's coming back. Right. He's he's not done. He's not going out like this. So he'll be in Zach Wilson's ear this whole time. I would take that over going out. And all those guys I just listed, like how much better are they really going to be? Because like I said, those are not guys that are going to make game winning plays for you. Like, again, you're just looking at people that will – just game manage for the most part. I think at least with Zach Wilson, you got somebody that's comfortable. The guys there rallied around him on Monday night. They got the dub against a very tough divisional opponent in a game where as soon as Aaron Rodgers went out, the whole the country, but definitely all the people in nut life thought the game was over. And he didn't balk down from it and – the defense played unbelievable. And like I said, when he needed to have the when he needed to have it on third down and needed to get the points, he got the drives put together. Um, I think you just have to write it out with, with Zach for the long term, but I think it really may just be your best option in the short term because I don't know if any of those free agent guys really are moving the needle as much as you think it would. I, 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 I see what you're saying, but I just, I have to disagree. I, I just don't think like, I think Zach Wilson will actively lose you games. Like the, the interception he threw, did you like, you saw the interception. He no, threw. that was, it was bad. That was bad. Who are you throwing to? Like, like this user alert. Not- like, bro, <laughs> he, he didn't have to lurk. Like, he was just standing there. Like, yeah. but that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. 
and he's just not capable of making the right decision and the right throws. And I don't think he has enough experience that uh, of to be the quarterback that this team needs. I think that say you you say you throw in a guy like Jacoby Brissett, Andy Dalton. I think they will like the ceiling is not the ceiling's gone. Like the quarterback ceiling is absolutely gone. Like yeah. we're not talking about ceiling at this point. Because Zach Wilson probably has the highest ceiling. Because he, he is he is he, talented. He's got talent. That's, That's what, what I was saying. saying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like this, he probably has the highest ceiling out of any of their options, but you're not going for ceiling right now. You're just going for floor and being able to manage the game and not lose you the game. I think Zach Wilson is not, he's just not that guy. Like I'd rather a Jacoby Brissett come in there. Like we seen what he did and pretty much everywhere he's been, but like last year with Cleveland. He just did not lose them many games. Like obviously, he still had his moments of not being great, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he's a veteran. He's been around. Like he knows how to come in and learn a system. Like a guy like him, trading for a guy like I don't know Andy Dalton, who actually didn't play too too terrible when he was on the Saints last year. So it's like I got just a veteran that can come in and and not lose you games. I think that that would be the best option as far as making this team go to the playoffs and be as competitive as you want to be. Because this team is too good to throw away the season. Like, regardless of the Aaron Rodgers injury or not, like, you're not – you're not the, the team – the talent on the team is not even going to let you throw away the season. Like, they're going to win games like how they did Monday. Right. What, 16 to 22. Like, they'll win some games probably 10 to 13. Like, mm -hmm. the defense is that good. So, I just think you have to have somebody in there that can at least give the defense the chance to win the game. Like – Zach Wilson, if, if Josh Allen wasn't absolutely terrible, and we're probably going to talk about him next, they lose that game just off the strength that, like, Zach Wilson also gave them chances as well. Like, he can't sustain drives. He's going to throw terrible picks. Like, he's going to make bad decisions. He's going to take terrible sacks as well. Like, mm -hmm. he's just going to do too many, too much stuff to lose them the game, in my opinion. So, uh, to me, I, I, it got to be, like, an older veteran that can come in there. Or even, like, maybe, like, a Carson Wentz. He's not even the best decision maker, but – I don't know. I don't trust Zach. The other thing you got to consider is that that O line is a little suspect. They're a little suspect. That's why I didn't say like Matt Ryan. Like we saw what Matt Ryan, Ryan was behind would, the close O line. That was terrible. Yeah, I would be scared bringing in a veteran guy who was a statue back there into Nathaniel Hackett's offense and have to try to learn that and also not have protection up front. Zach Wilson at least gives you mobility. And again, at least bit. is knowledgeable of the offense, been there the whole training camp. I think at worst, they have to ride out with him for a couple of weeks and just like, just see. Cause I mean, like, it's gonna get ugly next week. <laughs> it's gonna get ugly next week. It's sure, but it would, it would have been ugly regardless. It probably would have, I'm going to be honest. As far as, like, protection-wise, it probably Oh, was. my gosh, yeah. No, it, there's no time for anybody back there. But realistically, I, I I understand what you like. You can see both sides. Like, Zach Wilson is definitely still young and still has enough bad tendencies to where he would make plays that can lose you games. And some of these veteran free agent guys, like, you just – you you – you grow out of those habits after playing 10 plus years in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do that. They also are not going to be able to extend a play to sit, to save their life. They're just going to have to sit down in that pocket. If somebody comes out. That's true. Um, so I, I think at worst, the Jets are going to ride out with Zach Wilson for a couple of weeks, see where everything shakes out. Come, you know, week four, week five, who knows? It could be, Three and one, whatever, like in a decent position where they might really feel comfortable letting that just kind of continue to play its course. And I said Rodgers will be in his ear the whole time. So I have a little bit of confidence that they may go that route, but I would definitely not fault them if they didn't. <laughs> they went and got some guy. Cause like I said, of all the people that are eligible, I think it's you have to have minimum 20 starts. He has the lowest career QBR in NFL history. Listen, man, I'm rude for Zach. Like, I like mm -hmm. I, at first I didn't like him because I didn't like the comment last year, like when he actively was losing them games and was like, no, I didn't I didn't let the defense down. But I think this whole situation, him getting like publicly basically humiliated, um, his team <laughs> turning on him. Yeah, his team <laughs> turning on him. Like, I think he's very he, he got humbled. Um, he like obviously was willing to 
learn under Aaron Rodgers, um, was willing to like take a back seat. Kind of had no choice, but like he he went about it the right way. You know what I mean? He didn't like run and quit and like complain and stuff. Like he was willing to be the backup and learn for a little bit. So I, I I genuinely like seriously hope it does work out. Like obviously I don't think he's gonna be great, but like I hope he does turn into somebody that's just not gonna lose them games. Um, but I don't know. I just I just don't see it. Oh. What the hell? I think I just hit the back button by accident. It's so <laughs> real, you know. Oh, I'm like, well, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, I just I just don't see him. I just, I just don't see it. But yeah, but um I mean, hey, he looked better than the guy across the field. Yeah, and let's go ahead and pivot to the losers of Monday Night Football, which are the Buffalo Bills. And uh, Josh Allen, man, we got to have a conversation, bro. We got to have a conversation because while he, I believe he leads the NFL in total touchdowns from, I think, 2019 or 2020, also leads the NFL in turnovers, both picks and fumbles. Mm -hmm. And in a Monday night game where, like we said, Aaron Rodgers only played four plays. So you basically played against Zach Wilson the whole night. And he gave the team back, he gave the ball back to your team a lot between picks and just stall drives. All you have to do is any points, put something on the board, bro. And you threw three picks to Jordan Whitehead and then fumbled the ball on a bad snap because you're trying to be Superman. Almost all of the picks he threw were him trying to be Superman, throwing it downfield into double coverage, like bad re- – like it's not even a read. Like you're literally just trying to like ch- out throw the coverage right now. The pick mm. that he threw that was kind of short on like an out route is a bad ball. That ball has to be – outside of the receiver he threw it way inside shoulder which let jordan whitehead even have the opportunity to break down on it and then the fumble again it's a bad snap you picked it up you could have just fell on it and because you picked it up and you get hit now it comes back out all all of his plays that he turned the ball over on are him trying to be superman and with a roster that has been this good in buffalo the defense that has been this good in buffalo I understand it's hard to tell a guy who plays that that way to like dial it back, but he has to dial it back, bro. Or he's he's single handedly going to limit what this team can do because you yeah. just you cannot turn the ball over four times like that. Like people were talking about it on ESPN, like you know the Bills turn the ball over. No, Josh Allen turned the ball over four times. It, James Cook didn't fumble. Diggs didn't fumble. You fumbled. You threw the picks. Like he turned the ball over <clears throat> four times in a game that was handed to him on a silver platter because of that injury. Like obviously you hate to see that, but at the end of the day, bro, it's Zach Wilson, and he was not expecting to play tonight. Like. The yeah. whole energy of MetLife disappeared, and like it should have just been a free win for you. And he just literally gave the game away over and over and over. And yeah, I, I part of me as the Cowboys fan is like, I don't know, man. We got on Dak pretty crazy last year for these interceptions and. That was a like way worse performance than Dak had last year. any of the Dak games last year. Like that was way more egregious on primetime TV in a way more winnable game. So like I just want the criticism to be fair across the board, bro. That's true. That can't happen, bro. That can't happen out of a guy. A lot of people are penciling in top three minimum QB in the league right now. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's tough. Um, it's definitely tough. I will say the the criticism is starting to to kick up a little bit for for Josh Allen after last night. I mean, it I feel like people to, have no bro. choice. What I will say is, and I don't dis- disagree with anything you said. Like, I fully agree with everything you said. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate a little bit. What I will say is a little tough because in his situation, like like you said, every all the turnovers are because he's trying to be Superman. What I will say is be uh. Like the Bills kind of 
he has to be Superman for them to win a lot of the games, which I can see why as a quarterback, it would be hard for you to turn that on and off. Like he has to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be like one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but I can see how it can be a little bit tough because there's a lot of games where it's like, bro, Josh Allen is there. Like he, I think there's like a stat that like he accounts for like 80% of their touchdowns or something like that, like rushing and throwing. Like he is their whole offense a lot of the time. So I just think it's hard for him to find that balance between me having to do everything and me just making the right play and like mm-hmm. taking what the defense gives me and me not losing us this game. But like you said, I mean, it's no excuse. I just feel like I see how that could be a little bit hard. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be this top tier quarterback, if you're going to get paid all this money, you're going to be regarded with the names that you're with. You, you got to know how to turn that on and off. Like, you know, yeah. there's, there's nothing I can really say. So, um, yeah, it's uh, you're going to have to learn to do that, man. And what I will say, the Jets also do have his number. Like, he does not play good against the Jets. Like, no. it is a good opponent, and the Jets always have his number. But it, We've seen he's turned the ball over multiple times in multiple games versus other opponents other than the Jets. Like he won that stretch last year towards like the second half of the year where he was just the decision making was just terrible. Yeah. Um, so that's something he's gonna have to work on, man. If this if this Bills team is really gonna be like Super Bowl contenders like they're supposed to be. Yeah, because like you said, these him. Trying to be Superman in these instances is what got him in that conversation to be with guys like Mahomes and Burrow and be regarded in that same elite tier of quarterback. But that's the same thing that's really limited his ability to get beyond any of them in the AFC. You saw what happened last year when the the Bengals came to Buffalo. He couldn't get nothing going. Yeah. Like, it, you just... He's got to figure it out. He went to the podium after the game and was just like, you know, this one's on me. But, like, there's been too many instances of these turnovers leading to losses in big games, divisional games, tight games, playoff games. Like, you just can't have them at this rate if you want to be considered. Forget teams – like, forget being – individually like consider an elite quarterback if you want the bills to be legitimate contenders to come out of the afc he can't do this cannot play like that yeah gotta learn how to turn that on and off man my home my home struggle with it a little bit not to this extent it was never to this extent but yeah. like, it was that point of the season or that, actually that whole year pretty much where he was kind of throwing more picks than he normally did trying to do too much trying to be right. superman but then he learned, all right, just take what the defense gives me. Mm-hmm. Now I make the big – not I don't, every play doesn't have to be a home run. Right. And, like, you know what the thing is that gives me with Josh Allen, too? I, I, can, like, I feel like there's certain times where you can see, like, visibly just watching the game that Josh Allen is in his own head. Because, like, not even just with throws – like even when he runs the ball, like when he would try to like hurdle the guy, right? He tried like, to he acting like he's diving for the goal line. You're like seven yards yeah. behind the sticks. <laughs> Why are you even putting your body at risk right now? If you that's get like, hurt, the season is wraps in Buffalo, bro. Like that's, that's an saying. unnecessary hit to take. He just I don't know, like in though in like big games in those moments against divisional opponents is like I feel like he starts overthinking it because like that's mm-hmm. just like. Everybody's watching, like, bro, what? I probably Jets fans are probably like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what I are you was doing? Tripping. I thought they, I thought the yellow line on TV was bugged out. Like, yeah. What Wait, is, huh? Why is he trying to <laughs> hurdle two people five yards short of the, the first down? Sticking line. the ball out like he's about to get right. the first down. I'm like, bro, what? Like, yeah. Or, and yeah. like picking up the fumble, like instead of falling on it. It's like, it's like bro, you're just in your own head overthinking right. stuff, and like, um, even on one of the deep passes to to Whitehead that got intercepted. Bro, I kid you not, if you go back and watch the live feed, the closest defender is like three yards behind the sticks. He could have just walked for the first down, but he's yeah. rolling out to his left, throwing it like 60 yards across his body. Like, it's just so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary for a guy. And he's like, as much as I'm getting on him right now, like he's way too talented to be making these decisions. Like you said with Mahomes, like he was vocal about – when teams started to play strictly too high against him and Tyreek and Kelsey, he was like, he admitted like you, you want to force those deep shots. And it's like, eventually you just learn like, 
all right, if you're going to put another safety up there, we're just going to dink and dunk you underneath. And, like, we'll go down the whole field that way if you're not going to adjust. Like, so he just has to learn, bro. Like, you can't – possessions in the NFL matter way too much to give them away like that. His highs are very high. His lows are very lows. He needs to bring those together. That's right. it's that simple. And be more consistent. And I think fun. that roster is good enough that if he took away some of the crazy superhuman superhero plays that he made, but that also meant that he wasn't leading the league in turnovers, it's a net positive for them because the defense is still exceptionally well at every single level from – the D line to the linebacking core to the DBs still have got good receiving room there. I have speedy receivers as always on top of digs. James Cook looked really good on Monday night football. I think he's going to have a really good year. Like they have everything that you need. Like you just cannot lose them games like this. Yeah. So I think he'll be all right in the long run, but like it's been going on too many years now, bro. Yeah. People, people need to stop blaming it on the no running game thing. James Cook was my my fantasy running back was cooking. He was at almost four yards a carry. Don't, right. don't try to act like. Cause I heard a couple people be like, yeah, I mean, he didn't have no running game. They weren't getting them going. What like, game are you watching? James Cook was eating. I don't know what right. you, what you're watching. James Cook was going crazy. All right. Um, See, so yeah, chill out, my fantasy running back man. That's my guy right there. He's gonna break out this season. Go crazy. Yeah, he he looked good, but. It's going to be an interesting season now for, for both of these teams. The AFC East just got extremely interesting after one week. Like, yeah. very, very interesting. From um, all four teams, because there's a lot of things to take away from every team in that division. Yeah. Um, actually, let's let's pivot. Let's just keep it in that in that vein. Let's go to the, the Dolphins and Chargers game first. Um, since we're talking about the AFC East already, um, at the same time that the Jets lose their starting quarterback, Josh Allen is playing crazy. Tua comes out in week one and throws for 466 yards, bro. They're on the broadcast at halftime thinking that he might actually set the franchise record for yards in a game. Tyreek, well, he had 212 receiving mm-hmm. yards, two two touchdowns or three touchdowns. How many touchdowns, touchdowns did he have? Two touchdowns. Shout out my my that's my wide receiver. One. Mine 40, two in the dynasty. 40 league. ball. <laughs> 40 ball from that man. That was amazing to see. Um, but I mean, this game, especially down the stretch in the second half, felt very like almost college-like. Like it was a it was a shootout. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I would I, I have to be honest, I was really, really, really impressed with Tua. I mean, the receivers. You know what the talent that they have that you don't even have to throw them deep to get explosive plays. Tyreek is catching slants and digs and just whoop, whoop. And all of a sudden he's ran 40 yards down the field. Like, um, and the same thing with Jalen Waddle too. Um, so this Dolphins team, man, and this is the Dolphins without Jalen Ramsey. They're going to add him back into the fold in a couple of weeks. So – I think the Jets were both our pick to come out of the AFC East this year. This Dolphins team, obviously with the Aaron Rodgers injury, feels like this division, they have a very good shot at running it this year. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Two of them went crazy, man. Like, Like, what I will say is, like, just watching the game, right, because two has had big games last year. Like, he had a 400-yard game last year against uh, mm-hmm. the Ravens in Week 2. But even in that game, it felt more like Waddle and Tyreek going crazy because, like, right. a few shots underthrown. They had to slow down a little bit. They had to come back and catch it. It's like this game, arm strength looked a lot better. Like, a lot of those deep balls, Tyreek is catching it in stride and running. Um, He made, like, some crazy throws on the run. The one in Tyreek, when he stepped up, on the run, like across his body, and like yep. that was a dime. Even the one before that, I, no, you yeah, definitely before that. Um, I think it was a maybe. I think it was a third down. He was on the run, threw it to Braxton Berrios, like on the sideline. Like <laughs> I'm watching the game with with Derek, with our boy, and I'm like, we both look at each other like, I ain't no two. I, I thought he was gonna like 
throw it to the dirt. Like I didn't know he had that much arm strength. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like he just he he looked a lot. He looked good. Like this is definitely. I've seen a lot of people say, but like this is probably the best game I've ever seen Tua play, just as mm-hmm. far as decision making. I'd agree. Making all the throws, like this is the best game I've ever seen Tua play. Um, Tyreek Hill, I mean, like, I don't, I he didn't show me nothing. I didn't know he could already do. Like he's he, bro, he's he's different. I I know it's crazy because they was on first take the next day asking if he was the scariest person in the NFL. Like, forget Aaron Donald, forget Miles Garrett, Micah. Is Tyreek Hill the scariest thing to see as an opposing NFL player? And most of you up there was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? You can't you can't press him. You can't do off coverage because they'll just throw it to him short. And then you still can't tackle him in the open field. Like, he He's feels like a weapon. walking right, – he feels like a walking cheat code. Yeah, it's the most dangerous weapon. But it's funny because even, like, the the catches that don't like – he got a screen pass, didn't get no yards, but, like, made some dude miss and, like, dropped to the ground. I'm like, bro, he just looks too – like, he's doing too much. Like, he just looks too <laughs> fast, even when he's not, yeah. like, getting yards. But, nah, the, the only thing that concerns me about this team is the defense because – They get defense a lot of rushing yards, bro. 230 on the ground is – in a team in a game where Justin Herbert also had 230 through the air, like yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah, I gotta figure that one out, bro. Yeah, I have to a, figure that out. For a team that's supposed to like have made the defense better in the offseason, that was not a good performance. Like the the main thing to me was the rushing, like you said, because like Jalen Ramsey is gonna come back eventually. That's gonna help out a little bit in the past defense, but mm-hmm. they were running all over them. I mean, Al Sackler is obviously a good running back, but even like Joshua Kelly. Was he was towing? Yeah, like Joshua Kelly was running that rock. I think, and like, he, bro, do he kind of look like Austin Eckler? You when he run? I feel like it looked like Austin Eckler, bit. but he just changed the jersey. A little, they got a similar running style. Joshua Kelly just a little bit bigger. That's what. Yeah, it is. but like Austin Eckler ran for. <laughs> I mean, mainly a lot of this was that big run, but seven point three yards per carry, and then Joshua Kelly was five point seven yards per carry. Yeah, so it's that's just like crazy, bro. What I will say, like the Chargers O line looked really good. Uh, they're mm-hmm. finally fully healthy, so like that run, that running, that run blocking was really, really good. But that's a, a little bit that that's something that concerns me a little bit about the Dolphins. Like they're going to be in shootouts. Um, they have the capability to win the shootouts, but it's like I don't want to have to do that every time if we're going to make it far or make it to the playoffs or make it far in the playoffs because mm-hmm. eventually you're going to lose one of them shootouts. So that defense needs to tighten up a little bit and just on on the other side of the ball. JC Jackson stinks, <laughs> bro. Like he sucks. <laughs> when you really think about it, that was it was going to halftime. The Dolphins would have had three less points, and the Dolphins won this game by two points. <laughs> he yeah. kind of single handedly lost him the game. Bro. Yeah. He <laughs> is garbage. He's the one that's getting cooked on. Like, don't get me wrong, it's Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is gonna cook everybody in the league, right? But he's getting abused out there. Like JC Jackson sucks. But yeah, the Chargers. Honestly, I don't like their coach, so like I never really have faith in them. To How win does games. he still have a job, bro? He, After last year, that feels like that's it. You was up twenty-seven to zero in a playoff game and you lost. Nah, bro. Goodbye. You are the yeah. weakest link. Like, cause my thing is right. The offense did their job. The offense put up thirty-four points, running the ball well. Like they, I feel like they had a perfect balance of run and pass. Cause like he still threw the ball a good amount. Mm-hmm. They run the ball. They ran the ball really, really well. Brandon Staley is a defensive coach. They spent all of that money on the defense. They got what Joey Bosa. They got Duran James. They got supposed to be J.C. Jackson. They got Khalil, don't they still have Khalil Mack? Mm-hmm. Like they spent Eric, all that Eric money. On- Kendricks is up there still. Yeah. Like this is a Asante Samuel Jr. They have names on this defense, bro. right? And have spent money, and that defense is trash year in and year out so it's like if you're a defensive coach we're losing games we're blowing leads in playoff games like we're like we're not stopping nobody what are you doing for me like what are you doing like i don't i don't i just don't understand how he had a job after that playoff game like you said and i don't know if, if they lose if they giving up points like this i don't know he should be out of there in my opinion because like if you're a defensive coach what are you doing for my team Bro, I, I genuinely have been asking myself that same question all offseason. I don't know how you can have a performance like that. And it's not like, oh, this was his first year. He's a young coach. Like, no, bro. They've had – he's had questions going into last season. And then to have the season end that way, a year after they missed the playoffs off of that 
bogus stuff he did when they could have just tied the game. Like, the decision-making is crazy from him, A. But B, like you said, he's a defensive-minded coach, and the defense is what cost him this game. I think both of these teams are going to be very good in the AFC. So I'll cut them a little slack in the fact that I really think this Dolphins offense is very, very hard to stop. Uh, especially in week one where you have, I mean, like only last season's tape to go off of. So I'll cut them some slack there. But in reality, bro, to your point, the defense, the, you, like a lot of the questions or issues for the Chargers has been if, if they can be healthy, if they can just stay healthy. Man, this wasn't no question about health. Everybody's here. It's week one. Yeah. Like some games you just got to get and coming off of – to have disappointing last season ended to have it end this way again. Like we said, with JC Jackson with the bad PI call at halftime, which those three points end up being the deciding factor in the game, bro. You just can't have that. If you just got out coach. Yeah. Cause they try to do the same thing they did last year when they just try to man up and press the receivers just so that's the time it could be off. But it's like, bro, you don't think, uh, I, I, I'm blanking on the name. Dolphins coach, Dolphins head coach, McDaniel, oh, Mike McDaniel, yeah, Mike McDaniel. I'm like, you don't think Mike McDaniel is gonna know that? You, like, he's not gonna let that happen twice. Like, right. there's plenty of times he got Tyreek in motion on the move, or he got him one on one single coverage. Like, he's not gonna let the same thing happen again. Right. That last that last touchdown was just that little uh, stutter fade, and he's by him, and two is yeah. just two will literally just put it at the S in Dolphins in the end zone. He was like, go get it. Like literally, or you're, the gonna, long. you're gonna, you're gonna press the fastest player in the league. Are you serious, bro? You and wouldn't even do that in Madden. <laughs> Not for real. The long touchdown, same thing. It's like, they got him one-on-one go by him and go get the ball. Like, right. like he's, there's, he's too smart of a coach to let you do the same thing and lose to that again. So it's like, he kind of just got out coach really. Yeah. Um, Justin Herbert looked good. He's always going to look good, like you said. And I know you said a lot of people try to make excuses for him, but, like, bro. It's not his fault, man. I'm one of those people. It's not his fault, bro. Trust me, bro. It's not on him. It's not on him. That's my guy. Yeah, he looked good. I think the both of these teams will be good. But, bro, if the Chargers don't make some noise earlier, if this sputters them into, like, a, a bad stretch where, like, they come out of this, like, two and two, bro. Get him up out of there, bro. Brandon Staley cannot still be having a job at this point. He got to gotta perform. Um, we'll quickly loop through the last team in the AFC East, which is the Patriots, who should be 1-0. I don't know how you feel about it, but they uh, should the be 1-0. Oh. They won that game, in my opinion. Not like what? literally, but like they should have won that game. This this the defending NFC champion? Because they did not look like it, bro. I, I, bro, honestly, and I, I, I did this a little bit. I didn't take into account how big of a loss it would be to lose both your coordinators, um, mm -hmm. because that I don't know the play calling just looked questionable. Like, Especially on third down. On third down, it just looked like they were like passive, scary. It's like right. scary. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're not going for, like you're not gonna actually run a real play to try to get this first down. Like you're just fine with punting. Like, I don't know. There's just a lot of play calls that were just very, very questionable. Granted, it was a really good defense they're going up against, but they just look scary. Like, they just they, – they called plays scary, in my opinion. And on the Patriots side of the ball, it was a complete 180. And I've been, I've been saying it like – I'm not a Mac Jones guy by any means, honestly. But at the end of the day, any quarterback with a defensive coordinator calling plays is not going to do good. Like, that's yeah. just what it is. So, it's like, obviously, you get a real play caller in there, they're going to look better. But Mac Jones looked great. He was dotting up. He was making great decisions, making great throws. Like the play, but the thing is, he was able to do that because there actually was good route concepts. There were actually right. good play calls. Like he was actually putting in a position to succeed. Shocker! If you have a good coach that put your players in good position, right. they might play well. Like it's just common sense. But no, nah, Patriots. Even then, even me knowing all that coming in, that like obviously the offense is going to be better. They still look better than I thought they was going to look, especially against the. Um, Super Bowl runner-ups. What this game showed me more than anything is that with the, the Eagles lost five or six starters on defense from last year, mm -hmm. that's that is very concerning. Like it was concerning. Give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's see how it rolls out to start the season. You let Matt Jones, bro. 
Look at the receivers for New England. Kendrick Bourne, Ramondre Stevenson had the second most rece- tied for the second or tied for the first most receptions on the team. Hunter Henry, Demario Douglas, Mike Gusecki, Juju, Zeke, Keyshawn Butte, Ty Montgomery. Like this is who Mac Jones is throwing for 316 yards for with three touchdowns against this defense that just was in the Super Bowl, bro. That's a problem, bro. Those are not elite weapons. That's a very, not even mid, that is a well it's below, below average. average receiving core, bro. Born as your number one, as your wide receiver one. And it's no disrespect, but it's just, bro, it is what it is, bro. Like, for Mac Jones to come out there and look that good, that is 10 times more concerning to me than the play calling or the offensive stalling on third down. Cause like, bro, if you can't stop this offense from going for 300 yards, what are you going to do when you see an elite offense on either side, like passing or running? What are you going to do if you run into the Niners with all the crazy stuff that Kyle Shanahan is doing? With what Ayuk is looking like after week one? Like, yeah. what are you going to do with any elite offense in the NFC or AFC if you're trying to make it to the Super Bowl again? Because it's looking kind of like free food after week one. I don't want to overreact too early. Like you said, they don't have the same coordinators as last year. I'll give it some time to gel, but you have that much time, bro. This ain't the preseason no more. We we never made, um like, Super Bowl predictions, like who's coming to the AFC, NFC. I, myself... Pick the Eagles to win the Super Bowl again. Or not again, but like they were going to make the Super Bowl and they were going to win it this time. That's who I predicted before the season. Obviously, it's just week one. Like, it's literally everything's going to fluctuate. But like, if I had to make a power rankings based off of week one, they drop below the Niners and the Cowboys. Easily. Just off of what I've seen like this week, just because everything you just said, it's like if you're letting the Patriots dot you up like this, when you face a real like elite offense, it can look scary. And then along with the fact that the play calling is just the offense on the like on the offense side of the ball, it just didn't look it didn't look the same. It didn't look like a well-oiled machine like how it looked last year, which is a lot of people's concerns was like, man, like y'all playing a bunch of bums all year. It's like what happens when y'all play in the lead team? So I don't know, man. It's a it, it, this they're lucky they won this game. Extremely, bro. Cause if the Patriots just I don't know what Belichick was doing down the stretch. He had multiple opportunities late in the game. Like, bro, just take your three. This offense is not moving the ball, bro. Mm -hmm. Take the three. You're going to get the ball back. If he would have just took – he had like three drives that stalled out around like the 30-yard line. Right. If you just take your three all three times, you literally win the game. Yeah. So, they're – it's it's tough. Eagles, I'm going to be watching them very closely come these – Next coming week, especially I need to look at their schedule. Like when they play like some some really good teams. When they play Dallas, bro. Yeah, are you ready for the smoke? <laughs> yeah, let me, let me see that. When they play the well, Cowboys. Actually, okay, well they well, Minnesota sucks though. Like they play Minnesota tomorrow. They play tomorrow, yeah. They they, they play Minnesota. All right, they got kind of a little a little stretch where they can get it. They can get their groove going. They play the Vikings, who they blow out every time. Yeah. And in prime time, oh my god, it's about to get ugly for Kirk. Yeah, prime time <laughs> Kirk. Oh, <bro. laughs> Jet is about to be frustrated. You about to man, but they they play the Vikings and they play the Bucks, which actually look kind of good. And then they play the Commanders, then the Rams, which also actually actually kind of look kind of good. Mm-hmm. And they play the Jets and then the Dolphins. Dolphins might eat their food. Then the Commanders, then the Cowboys. So they got they got a lot of time before they play the boys. Okay. Well, let's talk about them boys because we don't fear them. <laughs> Who we fear, bro? What are we supposed to fear? Yo, the oh, switch up oh. is crazy. <laughs> what, are we, what are we supposed to fear, bro? 40s, it's Sunday night football. It's MetLife. We, we in New York. It's raining. What that supposed to mean, bro? 40 ball in your head, bro. <laughs> this Y'all gave Daniel Jones crazy. 40 million. He can't even, he can't do nothing. He can't throw, can't run. I'm not trying here. None of that, bro. This y'all year, bro? This is the year. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> We here, bro. Oh, <laughs> we finally come around. How to about it. them Cowboys? <laughs> yeah, it, look, in all seriousness, 
I'm going to need you to keep me in check because tell me if I'm tripping out, bro. I don't know if I've seen a defense be as dominant in that game in a, bro, a very long time at any level of football. Like, that junk felt like when them SEC teams play an FCS team, like Alabama is playing like Charleston South or something, bro. Like, That's literally what I said. Y'all shouldn't be on the same football field together. That's what it felt like watching it from the get-go. Like, off the rip, forget the block. I mean, a block kick for a touchdown was crazy. I'm already lit in the living room going nuts. But every single drop back, bro, we're in your face. And we're not even, it's no blitz. It's the same. You know who's coming every time. You just literally can't block it. Micah is one of the most, like, athletic pass rushers ever. He's a lock for deep boy, bro. That's bro, an absolute lock. he, watching his highlights back from that game, like, the pressures, the way that he's able to get pressure I was really loving how Dan Quinn was moving him around the line. He's rushing outside. He's rushing inside. He's starting inside. He's looping back outside. He's starting outside. He's looping back inside. He's taking on double teams with literally no fear. He's just stronger, faster, more athletic, has more bend than everybody. Like, he's a menace. And because of how much attention he has to command – Every like you're leaving way too many good pass rushers one on one elsewhere, and they're feasting. Odigazu is feasting. Demarcus Lawrence is going crazy. The backups are coming in and going nuts, bro. Like genuinely, I don't know that I've seen a defense come out and be more dominant in the NFL in a bro very very long time. And like that's me trying to keep my all of my Cowboys bias out of it, like. They played a, a perfect football game. Like you could not have asked the defense to do anything better. Yeah, no, I, I, I literally said that. Like everything you just said, like word for word. Like I was watching the game with my boy. Literally was like, bro, that might have been like this is the best front seven performance I've ever like I've seen in as long as I can remember. And I had literally said, like, as I'm watching it, I'm like, bro, this looks like Alabama playing, like, some bum school. Like, bro. I swear to God. I'm like, bro, it does not look fair right now. Aside and- from that very first drive that Daniel Jones had, where he had, like, 20 or 30 quick rushing yards, whatever, mm-hmm. he's kind of, like, scampering around. After that, bro, there was zero offense. <laughs> no ability to move the ball whatsoever. Yeah. And what I will say is, too, because the commentators were talking about it as well, it's like, the Giants knew they were on weren't on their level because whenever you're doing this, like Daniel Jones wasn't dropping back to pass. Like Daniel Jones dropped back in that first drive and was like, "Let me take off real quick, right? Let me get these little cheap yards." It's like they knew. Like once you gotta do all this like little non traditional stuff, mm-hmm. you kind of know like we're not on this level with this team. But we'll really mess it up for the Giants, man. And it probably would have happened regardless of whether they had to block field goal or not. But the fact that they had to block field goal. Um, the fact that they got up like so early, it was nothing they could do because now it's like, all right, you're in passing situations. Now we know you're passing, right? Like that's bad, bro. Like, nah, it is. It was nothing they could really do. And then honestly, when I see a lot of people are getting on Daniel Jones and talking about like, oh yeah, y'all paid him all this money, he sucks, he sucks. I know you were like kind of trolling a little bit, but it's like, nah, I'll, I'll be honest, bro. Anybody that feels that way, tell me a quarterback that you could put in. I don't. You can't replace no other players. Swap Daniel Jones for a quarterback and tell me what the what the difference in the game is. Absolutely nothing. There, you put you put Mahomes there. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's not gonna. It doesn't matter because he doesn't have time to throw. Like it right. does not matter what you do because Mahomes, as great as he is, does not get touched most of the time. He don't get me wrong. He does his own thing to like avoid sacks and stuff, but. That offensive line right there gave him zero time to even think about throwing the football. But the commentators are – they're laughing. They're in the booth laughing like – I don't even like – this is this is insane. I've never seen a D line just <laughs> – everything is free, bro. Everything was free up front. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, so There's I, nothing as, he could do. As much as I got on Daniel Jones in the beginning, like really – what what do you want him to do in that situation? 
He has no time to throw. The Giants' weapons were already a question mark coming into the season. You have to expect a breakout from somebody like Jalen Hyatt or Isaiah Hodgins or something like that. Lucky you got Saquon back, and like he looked good again early that first drive. Everything seemed to maybe start well. This game could have been competitive, and like like you said, the block kick happened. They got behind the chains. They have to throw the ball. Then Saquon ball pops out. Now it's a pick six, and it's like, oh my gosh, you're down two scores like this. Now you got to throw. It's like now Saquon. Now your best player on offense. You can't really use him how you really want to. It's exactly. Just, it, it it was slow, and then you got Darren Waller who. Honestly, he really just could not get open, it seems like. Like, he just was kind of boxed a little bit. Yeah. But even then, it's like, if he gets open, Daniel Jones is probably laying on his back by then. Like, they had, it's just – getting on Daniel Jones is pointless to me because it's like, bro, like you said, you put any quarterback in that situation, they're not – They're I don't even know if they score either. Like, I don't – genuinely, I don't know. That defense just played too good. So, yeah. getting on Daniel Jones is stupid. And then also the people that's kind of like – trying to nitpick at the win is like, well, Dak didn't play great. Like I'm like, good. I'm glad. I, I think he played perfect. I don't need him to do nothing. He that's didn't my, have to do so nothing. McCarthy said, right? I want my defense to be on the field and playing well, and my offense gets the ball. I want to control the game and get my points and keep the game in control. And that's exactly what happened. The defense scored. Great. Offense came on. Okay, we got our field goal. Pick six. Cool. We come on, we get a long drive, Pollard, touchdown. Cool. Now we're up 20 plus to zero. All I need you to do, Dak, is not lose. I don't need you to do nothing else. So, bro, if we just gonna throw little dinky dunk hitches and slants and digs, whatever, fine, bro. I, I don't care. I just want to win. I just want to win the game. Yeah. Like just game manage a little bit with right. the you have the option in your back pocket of Dak being able to like occasionally air it out a little bit. But, mm -hmm. like, the main goal should be let the defense win us the game, manage the game, run the ball. Tony Powers a great running back. And when you need to, you still got C.D. Lamb. You got I like the tight end Ferguson a little bit. Like, I like, obviously, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup. Like, you have weapons when you need them. Key, when you need them. Right. Just don't lose us the game. Like, Dak played fine. Like, he didn't – people are just looking at the box score. Like, he only threw for a 143. It's like – Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even need that though, because if you're looking at the box score, you ain't even looking at the whole thing because the score is 40 to zero. <laughs> so if Dak if Dak yeah. went for 13 to 24, 143, you're like, oh, that's a bad game. They won 40 to zero. Why don't I don't care? Right. He could have a zero QBR if we win 40 to zero. I don't care what he do, bro. <laughs> like, come on, we're worried about the wrong things if you're like nitpicking Dak's game. He didn't that's what I'm saying. He was it was up basically. Like 16-0 before he even really had to pass the ball. Exactly. That's why I, I just think it's funny how, like, in a 40-point blowout, like, we're trying to find the bad in it, and we're just like, yeah, y'all blew them out. Y'all look great. But Dak didn't really play that great. I'm like, bro, what are we talking about right now? It's just – it's crazy. So, yeah. Everybody's very... got to be on the Cowboys, bro. They, like, just – Get off, bro. Worry about y'allself because y'all not us. Y'all ain't 40 piecing somebody in their stadium in week one on Sunday night football in front of all of America to watch. Yeah, it was a uh, kind of pissed me off because I'm trying to have a good night. I'm, I'm asleep in the fourth quarter. Like, bro. I'm knocked out. Stephen A. Smith was on first take earlier this week and he was like, he was like, the Giants let down their fan base. And they let down America. <laughs> and Molly was like, Molly was like, how how we let down America? He was like, man, all these people, Sunday night football, you know, we winding down, we getting ready to start our work week. And that's what you did. <laughs> Not I was for like, real though. Yo, but like, for real though, like, <laughs> y'all really did pull up at home and like, Get embarrassed. Like, this is the NFL that should not happen, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, he's not wrong because Sunday night blows are the absolute worst. Because it's like, bro, you can't flip to another game. It's nah, not bro. Red, this isn't red zone, they ain't good cut away. You just right, gotta bro. watch it, bro. And I'm watching red zone all day. I'm seeing good game, good game. All right, this game sucks. All right, we off that game, all right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, a good Sunday night game is like it caps off the night so perfect, bro. When it's like that, I was it, bro. I'm on the couch like I'm slumped. Bro. This is, I'm like this is boring, but nah, very very convincing win, very good win. Um, 
like I said with the Eagles, like man, the Cowboys. I don't know. That they jump up to me. Like I, as far as overreactions, like they definitely look like that's just we've always said it's a Super Bowl caliber roster. It's just like mm. can they put it together and can they play smart when it matters? Right. And if Dak is really going to game manage most of the games and like only step up if he needs to. This team can obviously can definitely come out of the NFC a hundred percent, but it's just a matter of like, are the Cowboys gonna Cowboy? That's that's really what it is. Because talent wise, they're there. Like, and what I will say too, another one of my week one overreactions, and it's just overreaction. It's not a prediction. As of right now, I think whoever comes out of the NFC is gonna win the Super Bowl. Whether wow. it's, I like, I like I said, it's just a week one. But it's mm-hmm. like, bro, the way these top NFC teams look, Eagles is eh, whatever. But Niners, Cowboys, name the AFC team that looked as complete as either of those two teams. It ain't one, bro. Those defenses are in a tier of their own, bro. And That's I say it. this, I, I'm looking right in the camera. Week five, October 8th, Sunday night football. Is this Monday night or Sunday night? I don't even know. Oh, no, I saw NBC. Sunday night football, October 8th. What what is game at? This in San Francisco? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cowboys play the Niners? Yeah, we're coming. (laughs) We're coming. Yeah, Brock, we want all of that. We want all of that. Yeah. Ayuk, (laughs) Debo? That's light work, bro. (laughs) We want all of that, bro. Come on. We need our get back because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the Niners. Taking us out to play all back-to-back years, bro. This defense is really as crazy good as it was last year, bro. It's better. It's actually yeah. – and it's like a, a good step up better. Like – Y'all just have a bunch of playmakers, and y'all always – like, y'all always been good at turning the ball over. But it's like, bro, they're just they're so good at turning the ball over. Like, this is the defense – like – the Jets last year, right? The Jets were a really good defense, but they didn't turn the ball over a lot. Right. Like they, they just were good at stopping you. Right. Like There's Cowboys bend, were bend but don't break. Right. Cowboys are like, we can stop you, we can sack you, and then we're also going to turn the ball over. And right. then all the stuff, all these picks can go to the crib. All these right. fumbles can go I'll to the stay. crib. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, bro, this is it's scary, man. It's definitely scary. So I'm excited. I'm excited yeah, to see. Um... I'm excited to see how this how this uh excited to see who get the one seed. That's really what mm-hmm. I'm excited about. Look, I, I, it's only week one. I don't want to overreact too much, but we're going to the Super Bowl, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, legitimately though, um I have not been so impressed with, and I came into this game. As y'all know, if you listened to the last couple episodes, I'm a rather pessimistic Cowboys fan. Like I, I keep my expectations low, bro, because I, I can't have my heart broken. Tony Romo broke my heart when I was seven when he dropped the hold on the PAT. It's never That's recovered crazy. fully. So I, I just I, my expectations can't get up too high for the Cowboys or else I'm setting myself up for failure. And I'm not about to be out here crying over football. I'm a grown man. It's crazy. <laughs> but like <laughs> – I have not been so impressed by a season opener. And, like, I went from here. Like, if if we started out, like, expectation-wise, like a four, like, this team is going to be good. You know, I don't know how if they'll be able to put it all together. I'm skeptical. We up to, like, a six and a half. Like, we made made a good jump. I'm almost at, like, the it's our year. We're we're getting there. (laughs) We're definitely getting there. Let them go into into San Francisco and beat the Niners. We're winning the Super Bowl. I will come on this podcast the next day and let y'all know we're winning the Super Bowl. I will show y'all the bet. I'll put a hundred on it, bro. <laughs> like, we're going all the way, bro. Where so, where where that game is that? It's at uh San Francisco. It's in San Francisco. Ooh. Yeah, I, I San... want it all. Ooh. Is this I a... want it all? You said it was a Monday night game. Is it really Sunday night? Sunday night. Oh, that game is gonna be so. It's gonna be crazy. Bro. That game could be so good, man. Uh, yeah. I what I will say is too. Cause I seen. I actually seen first things first talk about this, like about the Cowboys, because like they were arguing, like, is this Super Bowl or bust for the Cowboys? And like one of the arguments was like, 
I mean, one of the arguments was obviously they're the Cowboys. Like every year, Super Bowl bust for the Cowboys. Right, okay. But the other argument was like, bro, they haven't made the AFC, NFC Championship game in like I don't know how long. Like how at what point is it not Super Bowl or bust? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so like I was actually on the side of like it's not Super Bowl or bust. Like you, as much as I hear you say like, bro, I just want to make the NFC Championship. I just want to. I, I I would. I just want to be there. Bro. Right. <laughs> and like it's, a part of me is like I know I would be so hurt if we get to NFC Championship and lose. I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, bro. I have to have a like have a couple days go by, but I would sit there and be like, "Wow, I just watched the Cowboys in the NFC Championship for the first time in my <laughs> life." Bro. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like, as much as I hear Cowboys fans, um, except for like the super older ones, but like, once I hear Cowboys fans say like, "We just want to make it past second round," I was like, "Bro, it's not Super Bowl bus, bro." A lot of them would really just want to make the NFC Championship game. Yeah, After that more. game. I don't know. It might be that defense is too good to only be in an NFC Championship game. That's a bro. Super Bowl caliber team. I'm about to say something crazy, bro. I've sat down before and really just like daydream, like, bro. Imagine the day that like I'm watching the Super Bowl or I'm there, bro, and it's the Cowboys and they win. Like, that's not a dream. Like, that's re- that's my reality. Like the Cowboys. Oh my gosh. The, the Super Bowl 60 champion, your Dallas Cowboys. Like, I'm going to break down, bro. I'm late. <laughs> I'm going to break down. Man, I'm not going to lie, bro. in tears. Like, the years of pain every single January when we <laughs> fold in the playoffs. Tony Romo should have been a Super Bowl champion. I will stand on that firmly. He was good enough for it. The Man. day that the Cowboys, hopefully, fingers crossed in my lifetime, win a Super Bowl, bro, I'm losing it, bro. I am losing it. And I'm going to be insufferable for the next 365, bro. Until the next Super Bowl is over, y'all can't tell me nothing, bro. Y'all can't say nothing to me, any fan of any team, in any sport. I don't care. I yeah. don't care if that ever, ever happens, bro. I need, I need the Cowboys to make the Super Bowl just off of the strength that, like, it's going to be so fun. The discourse it's gonna is going to be crazy, bro. Because that means they're going to have to beat the Cow- the Eagles and the Niners. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that means they're going to – y'all going to one-up them. So, it's like the discourse would just be – it's going to be great. It's going to be yeah. great. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be great. So, I'm rooting for y'all, man. Yeah. I'm rooting for y'all. Let me let me get off my fan high horse and, and let's pivot to y'all because you were talking about dominant NFC team performances. Yeah, oh my god. And the the Niners did go into Pittsburgh and I think they didn't <sighs> they didn't get a first down until what like the third quarter or something like that, right? Bro, we had we it was a point in the game, bro, where it was two hundred combined yards in the game and we had one of them. <laughs> 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 I swear, bro. Oh. Had 199 yards. We had one of them. Hey, that defense is crazy, bro. I watched, I watched um, who is it? Hafunga hit Farmouth in the end zone. Ow. Like my <laughs> rib, my ribs hurt through the TV. I was like, yo, why you do that man like that, bro? He got kids. I'm assuming, like, chill. What I'll what I'll say is because I've seen a lot of uh talk about my Steelers, all right. First of all, I was a little skeptical in this game. Not originally. Like, I said we're going to win this game. But you know what made me be skeptical? It's when everyone started to say, you know who my sleeper team of the year is? The Steelers. A lot of people were big on them, bro. Right. I'm like. Preseason had people gassed. I'm like, bro, that's not how it's supposed to work, bro. We supposed to. I wanted us to be, like, under the radar. Right. Sneaking up on teams. If too many people was picking up. A lot of people picked us to win this game, which I'm like, yep. that's making me a little bit worried. A lot of people. I've seen people pick us to win the division. I'm like, bro, I'd rather y'all say we suck and we're going to be in fourth. Because, like, I mm-hmm. want the expectations to be low. Right. Yeah, I made the expectations too high. Now the Niners is like, I ain't bad. Let's really show them. We always knew they were better. But I thought we could like sneak in there and win. Like once I saw Nick Bosa get paid, I'm like, damn, he gonna play. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like a lot of things just leading up to the game kind of didn't go how I wanted it to go. And then obviously you've seen the result, man. It wasn't great, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, bro, Matt Canada sucks. Our play calling is so terrible. Like I, our, our concepts, like our play calling is, and it's so predictable. Like it's like 
Najee's in first first and ten. We're gonna run the ball. Okay, then after that, Najee's out. We're gonna throw the ball. Like it's just everything is so predictable. It's like run pass, right. run pass, run pass. It's so it's so easy to predict. It felt worse too because you're going up against Kyle Shanahan, who, in my opinion, is probably the best play caller and like offensive schemer to marry up run and pass looks. Everything is coming off the same motions, the same right. formations, the play action. Everything looks so much the same. It's so hard to get a beat on what's going on when the 49ers hike the ball. And then, like you said, conversely, you flip the ball over to the Steelers. Like you said, it's like so predictable. That jet sweep was like the second play of the game. It just got like torch. It's like, ah, bro. Nah, bro. It's not it. <laughs> it's so easy to tell what we're about to do. Like, if I can be at home sitting down and be like, oh, yeah, this is about to be a run. Yeah, That's a problem. <laughs> that, is that is a, a problem. huge problem. That is a huge problem, bro. So, like, our play calling is terrible. But I also do need people to absolutely relax on Kenny Pickett. Like, I've watched, I've seen a Steelers fan talk about, like, bro, we need to have a conversation about Kenny Pickett. I'm like, bro. This is the, like, the most expensive defense in the NFL. And arguably, again, still in conversation for the best. So you want to have that debate between them or Dallas. Like, cool. I'm not going to disrespect either of them. At worst, they're top two defense in the league. They would make most quarterbacks look like that, bro. And especially a quarterback who has, I still remember, has not even played a full 16 games yet. Right. Like, he's still, like, he didn't even start last year. He mm-hmm. Like, the beginning of the season. He still hasn't even played a full 16 game. So, let's relax on Kenny Pickett. Right. Like, again, I really just feel like the preseason – People just got way too high. So then when we get down to reality of like where we really are compared to the Niners, which is 30 to 7, like people are like, oh my God, the Steelers are these frauds. I'm like, we were never supposed to be contenders. Like, what are y'all right. talking about? So y'all, like, y'all put the expectations up. It, it is crazy, bro. And then yeah. I got Patrick Peterson over here trash talking Rock Purdy. It's like, and then you can head tap by IU and then your ankles broke. You're like 45 years old. Like, what do you even, like, stop trash talking, bro? What are you talking about? I feel stupid that I was fading Ayuk in fantasy. He, he proved me wrong. I, hey, my fault, bro. I, I, yeah, I knew he was a good real-life receiver. Like, Ayuk is nice in real life. Ayuk better than Debo. I've been saying that. Ayuk is a way better receiver than Debo. He's definitely a better pass catcher than Debo, for sure. And he, he, he turned seen, up. He I haven't turned seen up Debo, in this game. I haven't seen Debo run a real route my whole life. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I ain't see him right Just now. get that man the ball, bro. So I say credit to him. Yeah, he gonna get the ball, he gonna go, but I ain't see him catch a back shoulder. I ain't, I ain't see him do none of that, bro. <laughs> but uh, nah, it's just uh what I can say is TJ Watts the best defense. That's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, look, on the bright side, that boy TJ had three sacks and a fumble, bro. He had two forced fumbles. He just two forced fumbles, one recovery. Yeah, yeah, bro. TJ is the best, bro. That's just what I can. Like, you gotta take the small wins when they come, bro. Like, yeah. TJ Watts the best, bro. That's all I can say. That's definitely respectable. Definitely respectable yeah. from him. But yeah, we're we're just not on that level. It's just tough. Right. I, I'm not too like. If I was in your shoes, I wouldn't be too pressed. Like, bro, this Niners team is. Nah. Literally, when you really think about it, Brock Purdy's making like nine hundred thirty thousand dollars a year. All the like forty plus million most other quarterbacks are making. This was like, what if we just put that towards every single defensive position? How good could our defense defense really be? And just was like, yeah, let's do it. And exactly. just put together a monster squad, bro. Literally, it's an all star team, bro. That defense is. It's not even fair, bro. Like to have that many people on the same team is just ridiculous, bro. They have right. so, bro. They have so many people on offense and defense, or just in general, who are the best player at their position and like in the league. Like mm-hmm. you have like Trent Williams, he's the best. Kelsey, I mean not Kelsey. Kittle is not the best, but he's like second. He's, say he's the second he's, best. Some people even there. say some people say he's talent wise is the best, which is like he, he do got the blocking advantage. No tight end remotely close. Exactly. So you can make a case that Chris McCaffrey is the best. Like, he's been producing, like, the best these past couple years. Spin moves was filthy. That was disgusting. You got freaking Nick Bosa, who was just a depoy. I don't think he's the best, but he just was the depoy. Fred right. Warner. Like, you got so many people who can say, like, they're the best at their position all on one team. It's, right. it's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, they are uh, a Niners team. is something, something serious, bro. 
it's tough because they deserve it. I, it's so many teams. You ever you ever feel like there's so many teams that like deserve a Super Bowl? Like I feel like the Niners are a team that's like they're too talented to not have a Super Bowl. Bro. They had, bro. It was in their hands. All Jimmy G had to do was one more drive, bro. Yeah. That's all he needed to do one more drive, and they had it. But Pat deserved a Super Bowl, you know. It's like so many people would deserve a Super Bowl, bro. It's like it's only one, only one team could come out on top. Yeah, it's hard to win in the NFL. That's what uh, Robert Sala said right after the the game. He was like, "Look, as as rough as it is with the Aaron Rodgers injury, at the end of the day, we won the game, and it's hard to win in the NFL. So we, yeah. you got to take them when you get them. It's difficult to difficult to win a game, let alone a Super Bowl." Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Complete side note. Completely off track. Has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I'm just looking at the schedule here, and like I scrolled up a little bit too much, and it just shows the last week of preseason, and it says the Broncos 41 and the Rams zero. Somebody got absolutely destroyed in preseason. Yeah. <laughs> completely side note. Has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I just looked. At, I was like 41, nothing. God damn. <laughs> but yeah, nah. It's it's damn. We got our ass buzz. God damn. That was tough, yeah. Cowboys defense and the Niners defense went out, and and they made a statement <laughs> to the rest of the league, like, y'all are not on our level, bro. Y'all are not on our level. What I will say is there is another defense who's not surprising because I knew they were going to be better, but, like, they looked really good. That's the Browns defense. Let's talk about it. That Browns defense. They Let's talk about it. They like, like Miles Garrett has always seemed like the one guy on that defensive line. I was like, all right, he's gonna wreak havoc. But like, we really just gotta stop Miles Garrett. They now just have a unit <laughs> that is just disgusting and allows Miles Garrett right. to like be you a little bit more. Worry about Darius now over there. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You gotta worry about the dude that came from the I think it was the Texans. Um, bro. I forgot his name, but that like they they just it was disgusting to see. Like it was disgusting to see. They came from every angle. It was freeing up this guy, freeing up Miles, freeing up that guy. And then on the back end, you got a great cornerback room who's like playing good defense and stopping T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. So even when Bro does have at least a little bit of time to throw, no one's open. Like they're playing good coverage everywhere. Mm-hmm. That defense looked gross. Like they just look disgusting, and I guess it was way. I understand it was raining too. Joe Burrow first game, like game action all season, didn't play in any preseason. Right. Barely preseason, did any. Generally training. didn't practice. Yeah, didn't practice at all. And like again, that's another guy who just the Browns has his number. Like he's now I think it's what one in five all time against the Browns. Yep. So they they looked good. I'm not gonna lie. Deshaun Watson could just be something, some sort of good. It's a scary team. I'm not gonna lie. It's a scary team. I still don't know how how I feel about him being great because he still had a couple questionable throws in there. He still had the pick that just looks that was just stupid. So mm-hmm. I don't know how high I still am on them or how high I can be on them. But if he is somewhat good, that team is kind of scary. I would pay a lot of money to be in two different O line meetings this week. The first one would be the Giants. Because I just want to know as a as an NFL offensive line coach, like what do you say? Because mm-hmm. it can't even be coaching, bro. Y'all are just not good enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not flat out. Y'all are just not good enough. It's tough. <laughs> tough. I don't know what to tell y'all. But the second one I'd really like to be in is the Bengals O-line meetings this week going over the film from this game. <laughs> because to watch Miles Garrett <laughs> – He's sitting here hitting Hezzy tween tween cross before the snap and then actually hit you with a little tween cross on the snap and come through free. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. You're done. Better than you. <laughs> Go take a lap. <laughs> Go take a lap, bro. If I was an online coach, time out. Go take a lap, bro. That's unacceptable. As a like your pride, your manhood, you just can't allow that, bro. Cut him. Do something, bro. It's no way you got this dude out here. He hitting a full park size up in your face and then just did it. <laughs> like, actually did a little cross and got behind you immediately. It, 
it was just like uh <clears throat> excuse me jj watt i think he was on the uh, pat McAfee show or something like yeah, that he was up there earlier and he was saying he was like bro like i've been in that moment before where you just are like in the zone and like you're you're just at the point where like it doesn't matter what i do it's oh, gonna work and i'm gonna right. dominate like Nah, that's so disrespectful, bro. So, like, bro, he's mid play. He's like, but you know, do you know how good or like how good you have to feel in the moment, or like how much the other player has to suck for me to be like, bro, I could do whatever I want. That's and what I'm do saying, it. bro. As of as a, forget alignment, as a former center, if I'm sitting here holding a ball and I look up and bro is sitting here. AI just jamming out right quick before the snap. Nah, bro. I, I need them kneecaps. <laughs> I need them kneecaps. There's no way. It's no way you about to do what you think you're about to do. Like you said, bro, talking about you feel like you could do whatever you want. No, bro. I'm a grown man. <laughs> it's, it's not going down like that, bro. It's, um, so dis- it's so disrespectful, bro. But yeah, like you said, the the when you when you have enough pass rushers to when you can comfortably move your elite edge rusher around, like to pick yeah. out mismatches, you've won. Okay. Like in no world did that center ever be like, yeah, Miles Garrett is gonna be head up on me. Right. Maybe a stunt, you know, maybe he'll twist and I'll have to push out to him or whatever. Like maybe occasionally he might line up three tech, whatever. Like I can. I might see him every now and then, but left tackle, that's you, bro. Right. And then one-on-one at that. like <laughs> Right. <laughs> we know to how. look up and be like, nah, bro, I'm head up. I know I know he's shaking. And, and it's, you can't have no help. Right. And it's, I don't I don't even blame you, bro. That, bro, these edge rushers are athletic freaks, bro. You should not be able to move like that at that size. What did they feed you? It's crazy. Like. Damn, but yeah, now they look good. They they, they kind of yeah. scared me a little bit, man. And then, I guess on the other side of the ball, Bengals. I mean, be honest, bro. Like, like I said, Joe Burrow always plays like trash against the Browns. Like, they yeah, I, always I'm not play too trash. pressed over. I think a biggest thing, like you said, like not only did he not play in the preseason, there's a lot of QBs who didn't play in the preseason. Who we've seen that for the last couple of years, it's kind of been the trend, like holding your starting quarterback out the whole preseason. Um, they get into week one and they're they suck. They're mad rusty. It's like, Always, it has to happen. You have to get reps to get comfortable again. So I, I'm never gonna be pressed off week one. I think Burrow's gonna be fine. It just is a crazy look that you sign him to the 275 million dollar deal and Burrow couldn't give you a touchdown, like a touchdown. He did. Just, he didn't throw for 100 yards. He threw for 82, 82 yards. yards. Almost 20.3 20. QBR. Three fantasy points. All, tried to sell me if Tyreek Hill wasn't Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't <laughs> look. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's yeah, that's crazy, bro. That is wild. And it's funny too because the bang like Jamar Jamar Chase needs to shut up because <laughs> he was remember he was talking crazy to Pat Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Pat Mahomes reminded who he is. Then he was talking crazy to the Browns, which is wild because y'all are the Bengals. Like. Y- what are you talking like? Y'all are a poverty franchise too. What are you talking about? Y'all act like, y'all, y'all act like not even me as a Steelers fan, but y'all act like y'all the Steelers. Like we are tied for like the most Super Bowls. Y'all are the Bengals, bro. Like, what are y'all talking about? You're a poverty right. franchise, just like the Browns. Like, come on, bro. Cut it out, bro. Stop I, acting like y'all on this high horse, bro. Y'all are the Bengals. I respect that he doubled down after the game and was just like, man, I'm tight because we really lost to those elves. Like <laughs> I respect that he ain't he ain't, he ain't step off it. He stood on it. He got um, to at that point. Yeah. Let's go around and quick hit the last uh some of these games from, from week one. Um some of the I gotta talk about Thursday night football real quick. Um obviously Kadarius <clears throat> Tony, top top Lions player. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> single handedly nice. single handedly sold that one. <laughs> Bro, there's not a lot of times where I'm gonna be like, bro, one player lost in that game. Like, it's a, this is a team sport, bro. Like, there's a lot of factors that go into it. <laughs> he lost him that game, bro. I'm sorry, you you literally gave up the pick six. It was mm-hmm. here, make the diamond, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It literally couldn't have been a more better pass. 
It was – and side note, that needs to be, like, its own stat, bro. Like, that right. can't be a interception on the quarterback. Like, that – as a pick. former quarterback, that pisses me off to see yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah, he the pick six, then I guess the one – the drag route was kind of tough because I guess the dude was running by him, so, like, he kind of didn't really get to, get a chance to track it. But, like – Come on, the third down? Or was the, it third – the yeah. one, the, the one, I think it was third down. Yeah, okay. when they were crossing and like the spacing was a little bit off. Yeah. Like he dropped it, but like it's kind of whatever. You still want to grab that. It's true, but it, it's kind of whatever. But <laughs> the other one where it, like you put it puts them in field goal range and bro try to catch it like a punt. Yes. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Now you're eating his head at that point. He in his head at that point. It's um, like, tra- I understand like he had had no training camp. You don't need training camp to catch the ball as an NFL receiver. You don't need training no. camp for that. Like, come on, bro. Look, at, at Mahomes, I ain't never seen a fourth and 25 play that, like, I'm sitting here like, I know they not going for this. Like, punt the ball, bro. It was fourth and 20. It was fourth and 20 about the false start. Now it's fourth and 25. Like, please, that was a sign. Punt the ball. And they really went out and went for it. And he still hit Sky Moore in his hands, and he dropped it. That's it's crazy because like when they go for the fourth and twenty five, any other team, I'm like, bro, y'all are idiots. This team, I'm like, they might get it. <laughs> like I was like, they but they might get it just because that was Andy Reid. Still, if y'all have not like really gone back and watched that play from like the the behind end zone angle, bro, that was a dot. He's putting it over like three people's heads. Right into Sky Moore's, he's the only person that could have touched that ball, and it smacks him in both the hands. And he just drops it. Sky Moore sucks, by the way. That he what's stinks. that whole receiving core? Hey, look, Rashi Rice got his opportunities. You know, five targets, three catches. He got the touchdown. Uh, Justin Ross didn't even get a lot of opportunities, but he he's a rookie. Right, but he was. Oh no, no, he's, not. he's a second he's, year. This is second year, second year. But he hooped in college. At this point, bro, you got all these people above him who they're Stank. not performing in week one. Bro, give him some opportunity, bro, because it can't just for Mahomes to have the career that you need. You constantly need to have him to have elite targets. And Kelsey is getting older. Like, gotta be real, Kelsey's getting older. He's got to start to find a progression into a new consistent number one guy. Whether that's another tight end or not, doesn't really matter. But like you gotta find, gotta find something. And this receiving core, as is right now, is still the big question mark. Mahomes may be good enough again to cover it up like he was last year between him and Kelsey, but they gotta fix that, bro. Because it's, it's like you said, it single handedly lost them this game. The wide receiver drops. But shout out to the Lions. Shout out to Dan Campbell, bro. What he's really done with that Lions organization is special. Special how fast he was able to, to turn that team around and get them to, like, really buy in. And that's a real statement win for them. Whether I know Mike Tirico was on the broadcast trying to put an asterisk on it immediately as soon as it ended. Right. Like, bro, who cares? They want to know the Chiefs' own one. So, shout out Detroit. Yeah, it really, like, it don't matter, bro. And it's week one. Like, who cares? It's an asterisk. You're going to look back on this in, like – Eight weeks and be like, man, that that game really meant something. Like that was that was an asterisk on that game. Like nobody's gonna care. It really right. don't matter. So just yeah, go for the lines, man. Mm-hmm. Quick hit through some of these uh, Panthers, Falcons, Falcons come out on top, twenty four points. Bijan, that little stop juke. He's nasty. Filthy. He's nat, bro. Bijan is nasty, bro. And, and Tyler last year is solid too. They're, they'll hold just the run game in general. Like they just, I feel like they're both going to be really good all year. Like they're just, they just want to run the ball. If Arthur Smith don't figure out how to get Drake London or Kyle Pitts the ball, I'm, about, he, to, he, I'm about to lose it. I'm about that, to lose it. That's on the fantasy guys, bro. You heard what he said, bro. He said he said let the fantasy guys worry about that, bro. Nah. Drake, he said Drake London don't care. He said Drake London will have zero catches all year and be fine, which we all I'm know sure is a will. lie. No, he will not. I don't listen. I don't care how much of a team player you are, bro. Hey, if we went 16, 17, and 0, I'd shoot. Drake London no ain't gonna no damn 16 and 0. <laughs> if you are a receiver, and especially as a receiver, receivers are divas. You view as a receiver, you're gonna have zero catches. If they told you, bro, you're gonna have you're the mind you, you're like a, the star of the team, like you're the number one guy, you're mm-hmm. the number one receiver. 
You're going to have zero catches all, like, every game. Zero to two catches all game. And we're going to go eight and nine. You happy? I'm, I'm not. not. I'm, bro, <laughs> like you said, unless we go in, like, we win, like, 14, 15 games, I'm like, all right, cool. That's fine. We're going to win the bowl. Right. Bro, I'm not about to have zero catches, and we're going to be this – Maybe make the playoff team. Probably right. not. Because yeah, we probably know, would be better it. if y'all would throw me the ball. That's, That's what right. I'm saying, bro. Like, come on, you're not happy with yeah. that. But Arthur Smith does not care, bro. They want to run the ball, and they will do that no matter what, bro. They'll be yeah. down by two scores. They're gonna run the ball. No, hey, matter. and look, they do it well. They do it well. So I, I gotta respect it. But bro, that's too much talent. Desmond man, Ritter, pop, call, a, call an audible. Figure it out. Get that men's yeah. ball, bro. Stuff, uh, man. But yeah, Bryce Young. Look solid, but he look like a rookie. All the rookies look like rookies. There's nothing to be stressed over. Hey, Jaguars. Kind of, Loki had to kind of come back in this game mm-hmm. um, and, and get a 10-point win against a division rival against the Colts. Anthony Richardson had his moments, had some big throws. Uh, mobility always is going to be there. I think I, I like the play calling a lot. They have Shane Steichen, right, as a new head mm-hmm. coach. I like the play calling a lot. I like that he utilized him, you know, well. Right. I think after the game, Trevor Lawrence was like, hey, bro, you need to like chill on some of the hits you're taking because he did get popped on the goal line. Yeah. Um, but overall, like I said, he looks like a rookie quarterback. He has athleticism is always going to pop. The throws, I think, look better than I was even expecting them to be. Like I had a very low expectation for what his passing was going to look like and look decent. Again, they made it very simple and easy for him. But Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley. Shoot, I don't know if he could bet. He would have bet on his over because, oh, my gosh. Eight catches for 101 and a touchdown. He's a he's a ball player, bro. Calvin really is – that man's nice, bro. I mean, we knew that already. He's nice, bro. He He's nasty. Like, you've seen a lot of people talking about, like, bro, like even like, form, like former NFL players, people who's in the NFL now, I think – uh. I think it was Devontae Adams a while ago was talking about like his top five receivers and like he was like yeah and don't forget about Calvin Ridley like he's in there like he's nice bro definitely nice and him along with Trevor Lawrence and a lot of playmakers they got on his offense like ETN is a ball player I like Zay Jones Christian Kirk still out the slot Evan Ingram's having a little bit of a mm-hmm. career resurgence like they have a lot of playmakers on that yeah. offense so that offense is gonna be really good all year like super high powered offense and then Trevor you know what I'm saying he's one of my my MVP sleeper right there. He gonna he gonna ball out all year, but and he has some dots, some hot ones in that game. Now, the one to really that was like in the tightest window imaginable. Yeah, T Law is in for a big year. Mm-hmm. Um, Buccaneers go into Minnesota and steal one <clears throat> from the Vikings. That man Baker Mayfield is one and zero as the starting quarterback for the Buccaneers. Kirk Cousins. Bad interception there down the stretch. Um, and Jettis had like, what, 130 yards in the first half and like 20 in the second. Um, I think this is what many people were expecting. I was expecting that this Viking season from last year was kind of lightning in a bottle, a little fluky. Y'all just kind of came out on top in a bunch of one-score games. It showed in the playoffs. and showing right now the defense is questionable. And – the offense, look, like I said, when you needed it, wasn't there. And Madison does not look super bursty out of the backfield, bro. Uh, so yeah. it's it's definitely suspect time right now in Minnesota. But, hey, bro, shout out Baker. He said he mid-game learned the whole Vikings, uh, 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 all them signals from the sidelines. So, I don't know, bro. Maybe Baker about to have a career resurgence in Tampa Bay. Play so good, he keep Mike Evans there. Oh no, Who knows, man. Who knows, man? You look like he can give him the ball a little bit, but yeah, we we knew what the Vikings were. We knew since last year what the Vikings were like. The eleven and zero in one score games, bro. That's not sustainable. Like, what are we talking about here? And then yeah. once you get into the playoffs, you get like smoke, not smoke, but like they lose. Nah, they got they got violated. Yeah, Daniel Jones hooped on y'all. Nah, come on, bro. They. We know what the Vikings are. They're going to be – get Jettis the ball. Jettis is going to go crazy. They're going to lose. That's just what it is. Yep. Next one, Saints. One-point win in the Superdome against the Titans. And boo-boo Ryan Tannehill. Three Peace picks in this gosh. game. 20 – bro. 
literally just was like, I'm gonna just throw it to D Hop. I don't right. care who on him. <laughs> just pick, pick, pick. Like, bro. I, Missing I feel like Conco on the wheel route. Like he sucks, bro. He how how many how many weeks you give Tannehill for they put in uh Malik or Will? I, I, I say maybe six at yeah, the most. Like I was gonna say like five five to seven weeks like somewhere within that time bro he's gonna get benched because he's he sucks like he's like not good at all and if we're gonna have somebody that sucks in there let, let at least be a guy that somebody that's gonna develop <laughs> exactly like we know what ryan tannell is he's just not good yeah uh on the same side of things olave had a huge day eight catches for 112 yards he looks like a monster rashid shaheed looked good slant boy he looked good mm-hmm. um Obviously, this team is still without Kamara. I cut them a little bit of slack. Titans defense is always going to be elite under Mike Vrabel, so low-scoring game. Um, but I'll give it to him. Um, Derek Card, you know, your guy. For the most part, that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's not that bad, bro. I just He's not that the bad. games, bro. The game last year against Pittsburgh, it was late in the year. It was watching. Snowing. I don't care, bro. Watching how many <laughs> times he was missing Devontae Adams, bro, my eyes was bleeding. Like, I can't with Derek Carr, but um, he still ended up with over 300 yards passing, one touchdown, one pick. Did he? Damn. Yeah, he, he did. Bro, he was dotting up Olave, and then he had a couple of different deep passes to uh, Shahid. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, the same team, when they get Kamara back, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued. Like I said, this defense has a very easy schedule of non-elite quarterbacks to go up against. So as long as he can just put up an average amount of points, they should easily win that division. Um, Next one here, we got the commanders who low-key had to squeak it out against the Cardinals. Sam Howe didn't look the greatest. Um, Did have one passing touchdown, and then I think he had one rushing touchdown as well um, Mm -hmm. in that game. Kind of squeaked it out a little bit at the end. But they get the job done. But really, the bigger story in here, this Arizona defensive front, they had six sacks. They kind of was getting after the QB. They was getting after Sam Howell. So I don't know if this is testament to as good as a front seven is or if this Washington O-line is a little bit sketch. But it's a little, a little bit, bit TBD. Yeah, I think it's a little TBD there. Um, but we know what Arizona is going to be. Big tank for Caleb. They ain't pressed. No. They're happy about this outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, Texans, Raiders, Lamar, very, very rusty in this game. Doesn't have any touchdowns. Does get 38, 38 on the ground, 169 through the air with a pick. Um, was sacked four times. They do, unfortunately, lose J.K. Dobbins for the season to an Achilles injury, which I know is hurting you fantasy-wise. Mm-hmm. For Ravens fans and really just – Football fans in general, it's like, bro, this guy just cannot catch a break, bro. Always it's tough hurt, to bro. watch. And it's like bad injuries, bro. The ACL and his ACL wasn't his ACL was like uh Javante Williams, where he like it wasn't like multiple different right. You um, get like ACL, MCL, LCL, yeah, yeah all hurt. that. It was yeah, they come back with a killie. Like his career might be like legitimately might be toast. Yeah, it's so unfortunate for him. Really tough for him. Um, but say flowers. Nasty. Stole, stole the show in this one. Um, just consistently finding space in those mid mid zone areas, 10, 15 yard throws. Speed was on point. The connection with Lamar looked really good early. So I'm excited to see how that looks when they get Mark Andrews back this week. Um, again, CJ Stroud didn't turn the ball over, didn't throw a touchdown either. Threw 44 times, which I mean, kind of. Ended up having to be that way with the game script, but didn't look terrible again. Like I said, I'm not going to be too harsh on any of these rookie quarterbacks. They all looked like week one rookie quarterbacks. Um, Packers, Bears, Jordan Love. This one's interesting. He looked kind of good, bro. Bro, I've been, listen, I've been, I don't know what it is. Like, I didn't watch him at college. We barely see him in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I swear to, I just have a, I had a feeling. I don't know what it is. I'm like, bro, I just feel like he's going to be good. Like, I had no proof and no evidence. I had nothing to back that he at all. He just passed vibes. He just passed uh, vibes. Yeah, where I swear, I swear to God, bro, just vibes. Like I just was like, ah, I think he's gonna be solid. And he was solid. <laughs> like he yeah. was really good, and like, he's in a really good situation too. Right. Like, o line's great. 
He is going to have good weapons, good young receivers, and they're good running backs. Like he's good coaching too, offensive coach. Like I think they, I think they can win the division. Like, hey, he definitely at times with some of them throws, he was he was trying to look like Aaron Rodgers. He not a slick. little bit, the little I flick of the wrist. I seen a little flicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I seen it. But he, nah, he, our, he missed a couple throws too. So it's like he's still, yeah. you know, shaky there here and there. But like I think he's gonna be really good. Yeah, fifteen for twenty seven, two forty five, um, and three touchdowns. So definitely a big day for him. Um, Aaron Jones had a huge game, both re- rushing and receiving. Obviously he pulled the hamstring, I think, on that last touchdown. So hopefully he can – it's not too, too serious because um, he's going to be needed, especially if Christian Watson is missing any more extended amount of time off of his first game than he already did. Um, Fields did not look great. DJ Moore was kind of clamped up. Um, but what I will say, Chase Claypool, you got it. It's, it's over. They got to get him up out of there, bro. I don't like if y'all haven't seen already go on Twitter and maybe on YouTube. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but I know it's on Twitter. Go up there and just type in Chase Claypool. Go to videos. It's going to be one of the first ones that pop up. People have already gone into the all 22 film and just done cutups, passing routes, blocking routes. And just look at his effort, bro. I did strictly off of effort. You could have pulled a Bears fan out of the stadium and they would have gave you more. That's embarrassing, bro. Legitimately embarrassing. Not not running routes. And it's not even like routes that are like throwaway routes or like, you know, eye candy, like digs, slants, not coming out of the break, not coming off the line of scrimmage, blocks. He's just let – he's blocking on the screen, just like letting his guy go through him. It's just no effort. He looks like he doesn't want to be there. If I was Matt Eberflus, like, no, you're going to be a healthy scratch. You're not playing for me until, I don't know, you need to figure this out. Because that's not, like, in those situations, bro, you're putting people's health on the line. You're not going to block on a screen pass. Somebody about to get their bell rung. So, yeah. nah, you can't, you can't do that, bro. That's unacceptable. I knew it was up for him when he celebrated on the Steelers. In a, <laughs> when we were trying to, <laughs> like, the clock was running, and he's right. over here. First down, I'm like, okay, I know, I I know what type of guy you are, and then yeah. somehow we fleeced them for a second round pick. Not mad at it. Don't Crazy. know what Bears are doing. Poverty franchise, but I'm cool with it. Crazy. Uh, last couple ones here. Jimmy G goes into Denver and steals one. Russell Wilson looked good early on in the first couple drives. Offense definitely sputtered out um, in the second half. I think they only got three points there in the second half. Um, but overall, Russell Wilson looked pretty good, 27-34, two touchdowns. Um, they just couldn't get it done in the red zone. Um, and Jimmy G had that last drive. Um, he was able to get it done. And he was hooking up with Jacoby Myers all day, who I'm glad is okay because he got laced over the middle on that hit. But um, him and Jacoby looked good. Um, Jimmy G looked – he looked good. Yeah. You look good. So uh, shout out to them. I, I still think Russ is definitely lit. If this is the version of Russ we're getting this year, good. <laughs> good. Right. Yeah. It's better than last year. <laughs> um, and I think the last game that we haven't touched on at all, Rams and Seahawks, kind of a surpriser. Um, I think most people just expect the Rams to be bad, very bad. Um, and they went out. And Matt Stafford was like, look, I don't know if y'all forgot, but I still am one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He hooped, man. 24 for 38. Didn't have a touchdown, but 334 yards passing, almost an 89 QBR. Shout out, Puka. 10 catches, 119 yards. I drafted him in fantasy. He (laughs) he ain't on waiver wires in my league. I was, I was mad about it. So, yeah, I'm looking. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put it away. I'm like, who got Puka? Big vision. Yeah, <laughs> I big respect vision. It. Real, real um, ball knower of you. I respect it. No, he, w- he was hyper, hyper efficient in college. Um, Obviously, with no Cooper Cup, the rumors had been that, like, he might have bumped up to, like, wide receiver three on the depth chart, could get some action. Um, but like I said, with that efficiency, it just pairs up really well with the volume that Cooper Cup is leaving on the field. A lot of that just – easily transfer over to him. Um, so I, I like that connection a lot. I think that will probably be pretty consistent until Cooper Cup comes back. 
Um, so, and what really surprised me more than anything, this Rams defense looked good. They did. They, they really kind of did. boxed up this Seattle passing game. They didn't really get a ton on the ground like Kenneth Walker did end up getting five and a half a clip. Um, but they just got behind and the game script really didn't allow them to keep running. So they had to throw and so they, they kept Gino to 112 yards passing, bro. Bro, I they didn't I don't know. Was it you think it was more the Rams defense or, or the Seattle offense? Seattle offense just seemed like it just went stale. Like the passing game was just like they had one drive where they hit mm-hmm. DK on a fade, like got a touchdown. And after that, it was like nothing. Like they couldn't get nothing going after that. I think it's probably a mix of both. Um, I I think that this – I genuinely believe that this Rams team really felt disrespected, that, like, everybody had already written them off. And it's like they do still have superstar talent on the roster in a couple of positions. It's just that's – after that, it's a fat Mm -hmm. drop-off. But I think they felt disrespected. And the defense played – well, I'll give them that. I think, like you said, it's a mix of, like, the offense being stale. I wasn't a huge fan of the play calls on the Seattle side of things. But – um, and then, like I said, the game script wasn't great because I think they had success on the ground. But once you get that far behind, you just have to abandon it at that point. So right. um, I think it's a mix of both. So, I, look, the NFC West got a little bit more interesting. I, I was not expecting to see this result. Thought the Rams would be an easy cakewalk for the Seahawks, be a nice little intro for the season for them. And instead, the Rams are now sitting here at 1-0. and Um going to next week against the Niners. So well, I don't know what that's going to turn out to be, but hey, yeah, I, I'm at least interested. I'll keep a little eye on it, see how it, how it shakes out in the beginning. But um, that is every game from week one, and we are back, bro. The NFL season is back in, in full effect. I can't wait, man. I can't wait for next week. Can't wait for this Sunday. I love football season. It's the best. It's just the best, man. Did you just make a trade right now? Yeah. <laughs> bro, because all right, so listen, let me let me walk you and everybody through it. So like I sent bro a trade. Oh, this is a while ago. He's like, let me think about it. I don't know. I mean, all right, cool. I just looked down on my phone. I see sent the counter offer. I'm like, all right, let me see what this is. Cause if it's spicy, Hold up. I'll you're, you're it getting T Higgins in this. Oh yeah. <laughs> nah, this is a, nah, 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 nah. We, we about to. Yo, no, no, let me let me get in the camera for the TikTok. Let us know if this fantasy football trade is a fleece. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, it's a dynasty league. I sent bro. Uh, what was it? What was it? I sent bro. Um, Cam Godwin Akers, and Cam, Cam Akers. Akers just had twenty two rushes for twenty nine yards. He scored bro. a touchdown, bro. He scored a touchdown. We're moved by goal line merchants, bro. T Higgins had zero points. He had eight targets. He should have had some points. He, and that's bad. He got eight targets and can't catch one ball. He stinks. We just talked about how the Browns defense is clamped up. <laughs> Maybe T just sucks. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe TJ stinks. You know, I'll, listen, man. Yeah, yeah, don't get mad at me. Whoa. Don't get mad at me because I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? Out here, you know, doing my thing. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to make my team better. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being a good GM out here. Now I got the, the T Burrow stack. It's up for the league. I'm, bro, Dynasty, I'm coming for it all. I'm winning it. That is crazy. That is is wow live on the podcast this man out here making moves i, I do what i gotta it. do man i had to accept it before he'd be like damn what am i doing <laughs> i had to accept it first <laughs> i respect it i respect it um well to make the transition back to basketball to wrap up um today's episode we see it here on the screen but we we gotta 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 talk about team usa Left the FIBA World Cup without a single medal. They lost to, was it Serbia? Let me make sure I'm not tripping out. Um, I thought it was Germany. Or am I bugging? In the semifinals? I think it was Germany. It was Germany in the semifinals. Yeah. Lost to Germany in the semifinals. And then lose in overtime to Canada in what was the bronze medal game and leave 
the tournament in fourth place without a medal. And I mean, look, flat out disappointing, embarrassing. And what did it do for a lot of people? It exposed Steve Kerr because he loves to do a lot of the same things on Team USA that he tries to do with the Warriors, and he can get away with a lot of it because he got Steph and he got Draymond and da da da. And international ball is not the same as the NBA, bro. And you got people switching everything, and matchups are getting hunted all over the court. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing every single screen action getting switched, and all of a sudden, Austin Reeves ends up on somebody that he cannot guard. Like, no adjustments being made. Jaron Jackson averaged 2.7 rebounds, I think, for the whole tournament. That can't happen out of your center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bro, like, Walker Kessler came in and I think had more rebounds in the bronze medal game than he did, than Jaron had the whole, whole tournament. Um, so yeah, Team USA, the fourth best team <laughs> in the world. Um, uh, so shout out that track star because apparently bro was right. He was right. That he means was right. <laughs> so, like by his logic, though, Dennis Schroeder is the best player in the world. Factually, though, he is Dylan Brooks is the best defender in the world. It might be the best scorer, too. He might be bro, 40 points from Dylan Brooks. I, I see why we're trying to form the Avengers now. That was an act of terrorism. I want, to, <laughs> I want that to be known. <laughs> that to, let, to let Dylan Brooks put up 40 points against Team USA, terrorism. I terrorism. Think, when are we going? Like, all right, listen. I fully understand the stars. They get paid millions of dollars, mi like hundreds of millions of dollars. Forget millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. They really have no reason to play in these tournaments. They don't. But it's like one day we're going to realize that this cycle happens every single year. We send the Avengers. We dominate. Yeah. We'd be like, all right, cool. We send like half of that. We still win. But, you know, it look a little bit more shaky. Then we send our C team. We lose. <laughs> then we send the Avengers. Like it will happen. Like that cycle happens every single like couple of years. Like I was really hopeful that this was the unit that could be like we could be the young team. We come in, we win, and we just gonna stay together and just keep dominating. No, <laughs> no, no. Y'all couldn't be Germany. Who look all fair. Shout out to Truder. Shout out to the Wagner brothers. Shout out to Daniel Tice because he was hooping too. Um, like, like I said, international basketball is a it's a different game, bro. And these people who are typically role players, um, when they get to the NBA, come into the league, uh, come into international basketball, I mean, and they take their game to another level. Schroeder is so aggressive in international basketball. He's so good at getting downhill, so good at getting player. to the rim. Like literally, like he's a dominant pick and roll guard, bro. Like very dominant, hard to stop pick and roll guard. I mean, we know about Franz Wagner. Like he might genuinely be underrated, even as good as I think a lot of people view him. He has like almost no weaknesses in his game. Um like Mo Wagner also played very good. Isaac Bonga is on this team too. Daniel Tice played phenomenally for them in those last two games. Uh, I think he ended up uh, finished, had like 21 in the game against um, the Team USA. So, look, uh, international basketball is different. All of that is well and good. But, bro, Steve Kerr is not, not it, bro. If you cannot figure out with these levels of talent, what gets me more than anything, too, actually, is that it's like, I know Spo is an assistant. Mm -hmm. I know guys like Mark Few is an assistant. Like, it, it shakes something up. It can't be him. If I, I think Grant Hill is now in charge of Team USA. Shake something up for the Olympics. I don't care who we're sending because uh, apparently it's about to be LeBron, Steph, and KD. Right. And now we're trying to we try and recruit y Joel <laughs> yeah. to come and play for Team USA. Look, it seemed it sounded like it's in the bag, but I don't want Steve Kerr because I, I don't believe in his in-game adjustments. That's his mo as an NBA coach. 
is that he struggles with in-game adjustments. His only adjustment ever is like, mm, let's go small. And <laughs> I swear, bro. <laughs> it's literally not an adjustment. He's about to roll out that lineup this year, putting Chris Paul into the lineup. We're going to have three guards on the Golden State Warriors, and Draymond Green's going to be starting center at six foot, six and a half. Like, that's not the adjustment every single situation, bro. You're running Jaron at the five when Jaron has played the four all his time in Memphis, and it works so well because you let Steven Adams be the big guy. Let him box out. Let him get the rebound so Jaron can sit here and roam. He's getting so block hungry, he's never in position to get a rebound. That's why he's getting two a game, bro. But, like, it should not be that difficult to figure out on that level, bro. Like, from a talent perspective, the team blows every other team here out of the water. And I understand that a lot of these teams, when you look at – Spain or Serbia or Germany. These guys have been playing together internationally for a very long time. They send the same guys every year. Chemistry-wise, they're on another level. I don't want to hear it, bro. I don't want to hear it. Schroeder, MVP, he almost couldn't get a contract in the NBA, bro. Literally, but come out here. He's the freaking best point guard in the world. But it's just so funny, man, because it's like, like you said, this is like – this is Steve Kerr's problem already. Like you said, his only adjustment is let's go small. That's it. <laughs> That's it, bro. Top we... 15, best coach all time. Bro, it's great because, like, a lot of this stuff can get masked when you have, listen, first of all, dynasties. You have some of the greatest players ever. It's like a lot of your problems, a lot of your uh, your flaws, I should say, can easily get masked. So then when you put it on a stage like this, where you might actually have to make some real-life adjustments, you don't have Stephen Curry and prime Draymond and Clay and KD and all this stuff with you. It's like, I mean, you still have talent wise, you're better than the other teams, but it's like you're gonna have to make these certain adjustments and harsher international rules. You, you're not able to foul bait the same way in FIBA. There's no three seconds in FIBA. Dudes can camp the lane. Like it's a little bit of a different game. You have to be able to adjust, bro. Because it like even if you go back and watch those Avengers teams that we sent, we sent the Redeem team, and you got Kobe and D-Wade and LeBron up there and mm -hmm. Carmelo, like they were not easy cakewalks in everything. No, they didn't game. dominate. They, right. No. International basketball is genuinely difficult. Like it's not super free, but it's doable because the talent is that much better, bro. And so to not even come out of that with a medal is unacceptable. And like I said, the Germany game, whatever. They are the best team in the world according to this tournament. Fine. Y'all got 40 piece by Dylan Brooks. That 40. He put up more in this game than he his career high in the NBA. Are we serious? <sighs> Man, I mean, all I can say is it's gonna bring us the Avengers, and that's gonna be fun to watch. That's the only good. That's the only positive I can take out of this. We're I gonna guess. have the Avengers. We're gonna have a a a, a last dance, LeBron. <laughs> We're gonna have Curry. It's crazy how like right after, like literally the moment after, it's like, oh yeah, this player is confirmed to play. Now this player wants to play. This player wants to play. It's like, bro, why do we have to lose for y'all to be wanting to play, bro? Why does it have mm. to come to this every single time? It's crazy, bro. All right, fine, bro. I get, I'll play. Damn, I'll play, bro. Like, they keep sending me the invite. I'll play. God damn. Literally, that's how it'd be. But look, hey, I will also say though, that boy Shea step back. That was disgusting. Put Sniper. <laughs> he put Mikel on his cheeks, boy. Oh my gosh. All I can say is, man. Austin Reeves is the best American player in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just is, bro. He just is. Him and Anthony Edwards, bro. Austin Reeves is the best. So. Oh, man. It's crazy because this Canada team is going to get better for the, the Olympics next summer. Mm -hmm. They're bringing in – Jamal is coming. Oh, yeah. He didn't even – I forgot. He didn't even play. Wiggins is coming. Damn. It's going to be – Hey, Serbia just came in second. No Jokic. I'm about to say without Jokic. <laughs> Hey, Greece gonna be there too with Giannis. Like, I hope we send the Avengers. If we send the Avengers and like LeBron and them and they lose, that's gonna be a sad day for America. It's gonna bro, be a sad day, bro. That's gonna be a national tragedy. <laughs> that wasn't gonna be tough because then and Noah Lyles is going to have a field day. Oh mm -hmm. my god, that's funny. Oh yeah. man, but yeah, look. 
Steve Kerr, bro, you got to do better, bro. Don't start Chris Paul. Don't do that. Please don't. Please, you don't like, want to do that. Like, you, honestly, more than anything, you really being wild disrespectful to Kevon Looney if you bench him, bro. Crazy. Or you Wiggins being, or whoever whoever's not start whoever is not starting is is getting disrespected. You whoever being is. wild disrespectful, wildly disrespectful to them, bro. And yeah. like, nah, 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 nah. That lineup is going to do not put bro, Chris Paul suck. in that lineup. It's no defense. Suck. The offense is not going to be what I think they think it's going to be. But we're going to see, I guess, bro. I genuinely like. I'm starting to feel bad for Steph because, like, what is he getting? Like, like, come on, bro. What are you giving this guy? <laughs> he's no, got. He's don't got nothing to work with out here, bro. It's it's getting bad for my guy. It's, it's unbelievable. Actually, unbelievable. Um. Well, we're a day away from Thursday night football. Um, I know we talked about it a little bit, but the Eagles or the Vikings are going to Philly. Play the Eagles. They as bust. God. Oh, everybody gets scraped. Zero and two for the Vikings this early is that's a bad sign, bro. Like I that's what we were Vikings, expecting, but like, yeah, it's a bad sign, bro. I think the Vikings will like be like one of the worst teams, like record wise. Like they're going to be terrible. Like I don't think they're going to win a lot of games. I don't Dang. think they're going to be. I think they're going to be like well below five hundred. Like. They, they, the defense got so much worse. The offense is still Jettas or bust. Like, they're not going to win these one-score games. Prime, Kirk is going to lose every primetime game. They're going to suck. Yeah. Um, last one before we get up out of here. Your Steelers are out here primetime <laughs> Monday night on ABC. And this is in Pittsburgh again against Cleveland. How you feeling on a bounce-back game for your Steelers? Kenny Pickett, not Joe Burrow. We're not going for none of that. You're not about to rattle us. You're not about to be out here. <clears throat> That's dead, bro. Cookies, give me that. We're not doing none of that. <laughs> it, it, it's slow, bro. We're not doing none of that, bro. We winning that game. We winning it. We winning. I don't care. We winning the game, bro. We're pissed off. We just got our ass bust by the Niners. I hope so. We're I hope y'all would be pissed off. TJ Watt is going to destroy Deshaun Watson, bro. Deshaun Watson is not going to have no time to throw. We're going to win. We're not losing two games at home. We're just not doing it. I, I refuse. I refuse. I'm going to call up Mike Tomlin right after we finish recording. We're going to go over the game plan. I'm going to give him my little tips and tricks and, you know, things like that. He's going to tell me what the game plan is. And we're going to, you know what I'm saying? We're going to come out there and we're going to get the dub. Oh, well, look, I'll let you get to your phone call with, with, with Coach Tomlin. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Um, that does it for episode 29 of the Off the Glass podcast. Um, we'll be back probably after this next week in the NFL. Again, we're going to be doing uh, overreactions. Um, see if we can uh, maybe see if teams are contenders out of nowhere or if contenders that we thought from earlier in the season are flops now at this point. So we'll get into that next time. Um, as always, if you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you are on audio platforms, be sure to five-star review and pre-download the show. Follow us on socials. We appreciate all the support as always. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.